Grief is really necessary when it comes. You know, we don't, we don't choose the emotions, they choose us. But grief can also be dangerous. So one of the old sayings is that sorrow is a river, grief is the ocean. So grieving takes us, you know, through loss into this deep ocean. By the way, the, each emotion has a motion and an aim, and you could say the aim of sorrow and grief is to wash out of us that which is dead or no longer living. And, and so that's why in ancient Ireland, for instance, at a funeral they would have keeners, that is to say usually women who begin singing dirges and, and weeping and pull everyone into the tears of sorrow and grief in order to wash out uh, that which has to be let go of now that someone has died. Um, but there's another old saying, uh, too much grief makes a stone of the heart. And so there has to be a, a limit to grief. And, um, and sometimes the way, if a person is really pulled heavily into grief, then one of the ways to moderate that is to not be alone, but to do grieving with others. And then the sense of community, communitas, can help the person go through that grief and come back out. Poetry is another way to bear the weight. To me, poems stir something, heart and soul, the mind as well. And, uh, and I find if things have gotten too heavy and I, or I'm too afraid, I'll go to a poem. And just, I, I do it out loud, and just reciting it, it's as if all that heart energy, all that imagination from all the poets over time come and kind of line up and give us our vitality back. That's how it seems to me. This is called Shadow and Light Source, both. No matter how fast you, you run, your shadow keeps up with you. Sometimes it's even in front of you. Only full overhead sunlight diminishes your shadow. And yet, that shadow has also been secretly serving you. In the end, what hurts you also blesses you. If we can get our balance a little bit or just be sustained by others, in the end, what hurts us also blesses us. That's why the old Noahs say, Darkness is your candle. Your boundaries are your quest. I could explain all of this in detail, says Rumi, but that would break the glass cover on your heart and, and sometimes there's no fixing that. It's a little bit of a joke, but it's a little bit of sense that take it the way you feel it. You must have shadow and light source both, for this world is made of both. So listen closer and lay your head under the tree of awe. And from that tree, feathers and wings can sprout on you. So just a beautiful poem. And it's about handling the darkness, about, he says, darkness is your candle. Uh, one of the definitions of the soul ancient definition was the soul is the light hidden in darkness. When the world gets dark, we need more soul, not more escape mechanisms. Uh, just a quote from the psychological point of view by Carl Jung, your vision will become clear only when you look into your own heart, for whoever looks inside awakes to themselves. Another idea. In other words, pretty much we can guarantee the world is going to be dark and troubled for the near future. That's what we're going through. There's no quick fix. It's taken a long time to get here. And we can hear the list of all the things that contributed to the darkening that we're living through. So we're not going to get out of it fast. Um, but the soul is a light hidden in the dark. And back to the beginning. Um, the practices of keeping the heart open give us paths of meaning amidst the darkness and confusion.